Okay guys, I just wanted to tell you about something really cool I've just heard about. It's called the Two Foot Tank Challenge and it's run by the Facebook group Tropical Fish Keeping UK. So the admin have reached out to me and we've had a chat and basically they're going to come to my house hopefully and I'm going to set up a two foot tank for, for this Facebook group. The idea is to inspire people on know how they can potentially aquascape a two foot tank. I think it's a great idea. I can't wait to do it. I just want you guys to give me some feedback. What do you think I should scape in the two foot tank? Obvious kind of ideas are a planted tank, of a full on aquascape, but something maybe a bit different, biotope, black water, you know, something that maybe not a lot of beginners may have seen, but they might be inspired by and maybe educated by as well. So let me know in the comments, guys. What do you want to see me do? <laughs> that doesn't even sound very good, does it? What would you like to see in a two foot tank aquascape by me? There we go. Hi everyone, I'm George. This is my Aquascaper 1200 that I've neglected again uh, for the last, I don't really want to say, and today's maintenance day. And I want to really give you a deep dive into the maintenance process, explain exactly what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and hopefully you'll take away a load of tips and tricks for your own aquascapes at home. So I hope you're enjoying the video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. So a little bit of background into this aquascape. I set it up almost 10 months ago now. There's a whole playlist dedicated to this aquascape, so do consider binge watching if that's the sort of thing you're into. And it's deliberately designed to be a low maintenance and long-term aquascape. So I've used slow growing plants. We've got cryptocoryne, mosses, ferns, Got some uh, Nymphia, Tropical Lily in there. Uh, Book of Philandra, Anubius, you know, all the classics that I really love, but I love them for a reason because they are low maintenance. And when I'm running four, nearly, what well, kind of five aquascapes running now at home. So it's important that they are low maintenance because I do spend a lot of time uh, maintaining other people's tanks, retailers' tanks, and I'm away a lot. So it is really important to have a long-term sustainable aquascape. It does you know, get neglected, like I said. Last time I did a water change was probably about three or four weeks ago. Although I will kind of give a disclaimer in that, although there's no water changes, the water quality is still very good because of the really good plant growth, massively understocked with fish. That's the great kind of thing about a low maintenance aquascape, you can you know, neglect them uh, for a period and you can bring them back quite easily and that's what I'm gonna do today. So here you can see just how bad the algae is on the glass. Really quite embarrassing, but you know, it's important to show you guys a warts and all documentary style of this aquascape. You can see the glass over to the right here. This is the front glass, absolutely covered. It's like a brownie green dust algae. And if I move over to the left, you can see the back pane of glass around here. The algae is actually purling. So the algae is actually photosynthesizing enough to produce oxygen bubbles. So those white spots around here, all oxygen bubbles. So one of the first jobs we need to do is get rid of that algae. So rather than just put my hands straight in there and starting to clean the algae, I'm gonna siphon out some water. So when I'm moving my hand up and down with the algae scrubber, it's not gonna spill water over the sides, hopefully. So simply siphon out about 20 litres. I've got a bucket down there. You can use the opportunity to get rid of some snails as well. I wanted to talk to you about this. This is the Benelé Cleaner tool. Now it's my favourite tool for removing algae from glass. It's a soft sponge on one side, which I actually very rarely use, but it has like a metallic, almost like a Brillo pad, if you guys have heard of those. It's kind of like a wire wool, but it's really kind of like a soft metal, and it doesn't scratch the glass at all, but what it does do is it removes the stubborn hard water marks that you get with oh, these open top tanks. So the water evaporates and it leaves behind any minerals that are attached to the tank. These tend to be really stubborn, and I find this the perfect tool to get rid of them. What can happen is uh, it does degrade over time and the actual, the tiny metal filaments will come off and then they potentially come off in the aquarium, but they're absolutely non-toxic, fish and shrimp safe, so nothing to worry about. I mean, they're not cheap. I think they retail for about four or five pounds, um, which you know is relatively expensive when you compare it to a regular kind of Brillo pad or a scouring pad that you use for like kitchen cleaning and, and things. But I just find them the best thing I've used so far for cleaning these hard water marks. And then stubborn algae as well, uh, absolutely no chance with this. I'm not sponsored by Denelé, I've not been paid to tell you this, but it's just a really cool product. I 
like to do now, just to make sure the glass is completely free from algae, is just look along the glass and line, line your eyes up exactly with the edge and then you can really notice any build up of algae that way. And then just repeat with the other panes of glass. So look down there and then look down here and then finally the back glass as well. And that's fairly clear. There is a bit of an algae build up around the bottom, around the substrate, but I'll show you how to deal with that in a moment. So a really good tool to use is a credit card type device. <laughs> well, not a device, is it? Just a credit card type thing. Uh, fun fact story for you. Uh, this is actually a key card for a hotel uh, or an apartment actually, uh, when I was on holiday, family holiday in Sicily. I bumped into a fellow professional aquascaper, Adam Pascala, who is a very, very talented Polish scaper. He, uh, he runs the Idea Studio, ADA Idea Studio. In fact, I have done a film there. He was there with his family, exactly the same uh, resort, exactly the same time. It wasn't planned, it just a complete fluke. And yeah, it was great because we had a few beers together and played table tennis and played family kind of board games and stuff. And it was just really cool to see him out there. Anyway, I digress. So we simply insert the credit card thing <laughs> in between the, the sand and uh, the glass and that just clears this build up of algae that we tend to tend to get around this area. Now it's really important that we don't that we're careful around the, the sand because if you do accidentally get the sand in between the credit card and the glass and you start scraping away you are going to scratch the glass so do be super careful. Now we'll just repeat that process all the way around the aquarium. What I'm going to do now is remove any unhealthy plant leaves. And while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna give the plants a bit of a stroke. That might sound a bit weird, but it just lifts off any collected detritus, waste organics that otherwise can lead to algae. Hopefully that will be lifted into the water column and then be removed either by the filter or by the water change later on. So I'm just looking around the tank, any unhealthy leaves that I can see, there's quite a few crypts with holes in. I'm actually gonna take this massive, look at this, this is Cryptocoryne eustriana. It's absolutely huge. I'm actually going to remove that and that's because it's kind of shading the plants underneath and it's getting a little bit too big and actually by removing it and what I do is put my hand all the way to the bottom of the plant to the soil pinch it and then just take it out. Look at the size of that. That's got to be that's over 60 centimeters long. Wow. There's quite a few like I said this is Cryptocoryne. I think this is Bechtii. No Myoya. Cryptocoryne Wendetii Myoya. And you can see there's a load of holes in that and I'm not sure what's caused those. Snails don't tend to eat, eat, eat live plants, but maybe, do you know what? If shrimp get really hungry, they can, especially a mono shrimp, can eat plants, believe it or not. Maybe it's that. It's not, I don't think it's a nutrient deficiency because there's no like yellowing of the leaves. It tends to be just these crypts. So you might just have a little fancy for, for this crypt for some reason. Now it's a good idea just to thin the plants out anyway. So it's, you know, even though they're looking unhealthy, they need removing, but it's even if they were healthy, sometimes it's a nice thing to thin the plants out. It just promotes better circulation, promotes new growth and promotes sort of better light penetration as well to plants lower down. And if you've got a healthy system, you know, you can prune the plants really quite brutally and they'll recover absolutely no problem. So don't be afraid to thin your plants out if needed. Now it's a case of looking after the substrate. So we've got a few options. The first one is to just give it a rake and that will dislodge a load of the collected organics, lift them into the water column, and then we get rid of them with a water change. The other option is to completely replace it. So this, I'm talking about the cosmetic substrate here, which serves, the only purpose is, is cosmetic. There's no plant growth in there. What we can do is actually replace it. It's fairly cheap. There's only probably three kilos in here. Um, which probably is, is going to cost a few pounds, a few dollars. So we could actually get rid of it all, replace it with brand new, or, which is probably what I'm going to do now, is just siphon off the top layer, and then if we need to, we can replace with a sprinkle of new substrate on top.
Now it's time to remove uh, the rest of the water after we've kind of cleaned the substrate up. I've attached a garden hose to this filter inlet that's siphoning into my garden. It's actually been raining loads today, so I normally water the plants with it, but that's no problem, the rain's done that today already. I'm gonna actually siphon all the way down to the strainer. It's gonna be probably a 70% water change, which is fine. My philosophy is the more water changes, the better, the bigger they are, the better. Some people believe that it upsets like, the biological balance and the bacteria levels. But in my experience, I think the, mo the vast majority of the bacteria is already in the substrate or the filter, so bacteria is not affected. And actually, I just get the, the best results with these large water changes. It dilutes all the waste organics, which will otherwise lead to algae. The fish seem to thrive. They super active after a water change. Plant colours, everything just seems to be much improved the, the more water changes we do. So whilst the water is draining, I am going to clean the glassware. So you can see these bubbles, that's because the, the CO2 is coming in from the inline diffuser. I've actually unplugged it, but it just takes a little bit of time for it to stop coming through. So it's a case of removing the filter hose from the glass outlet and the glass inlet. And I'm gonna soak these in a, a warm water bleach solution, and I'll show you how I do that. And then we'll clean the hoses, and I'll show you how I do that as well. When the plants are exposed to the air during these big water changes, they can dry out. So it's really important that we use a mister to stop the plants from potentially being damaged by them drying out. Microsorum is particularly prone to drying out and getting damaged. Bulbitis and Echinodorus as well are ones you really need to look out for. But just a good practice to keep all the plants wet like this. So now it's time to clean our glass inlet and outlet. So we just run a sink of hot water or warm water. Put some bleach in. I use this thin bleach from a local supermarket. It's very cheap. Two liters is only about 40 pence, I think, 40 cents. And then, don't be shy, it's only cheap. Put a load in. You can use rubber gloves for health and safety reasons. Now it's a case of just letting that soak for an hour or so and then it's going to be super easy to clean with a hose brush later and I'll show you how to do that. Now we can fill up our aquarium using my special red colander which some of you may have heard of already. I've had this since day one of fish keeping so it's about 15 years old. It's uh, been involved with escaping hundreds of tanks so I do have a kind of close attachment to it. Let me know in the comments guys if you've heard of the red colander. Hashtag red colander. Let's get that trending, shall we? The water is coming from my tap. It's gone through a mixer tap, so it's at the right temperature. And we add some Seachem Prime just to ensure it's dechlorinated and just wait for it to fill up. Now it's time to clean the glass. So take your plug hole out. Give your hand a rinse because it's just been in a bleach solution. You can wear rubber gloves. In fact, I'd recommend wearing rubber gloves. Just under some running water, clean off the adjusting portion of the skimmer. So this is the bit that spins around. You can rotate around to adjust the rate at which the water gets either taken in through the skimming portion at the top or through the inlet strainer at the bottom. There is a video on exactly how the Aquascaper glass pipe work set works. Now I'll clean the actual floating portion. Be careful not to damage these acrylic cassellations. It's a good word, isn't it? Cassellations, wow. Okay, that's the easy bit done. Now it's time to clean the actual glassware now. So be very, very gentle with this. I am in an enamel sink as well, so there's no room for forgiveness. So just rinse off the outside and then I just put the hose brush in one end. Get some water in there while you're doing it. It should clean off relatively easily because it's been soaking in that beach for a while. Now the trickiest part is this part here. Put your hose brush through and hopefully it can reach around. Just, just do be gentle with this bit because the glass is super fragile. Sometimes you can twist the brush actually inside the, the tube, which can help. I don't think we're gonna get much better than that. Give it a really good rinse. Ideally, you wanna be cleaning these about once every two weeks. 
Um, they still work, obviously, if they're very dirty, but they will restrict flow and they do look quite ugly, obviously, the dirtier they get. So it's up to you. Some people prefer the steel pipes because you can't see the dirt. I would argue that's not necessarily a good thing just because you can't see it obviously doesn't mean it's not dirty and you can potentially leave it for too long and your flow will be restricted quite significantly and then you might start running into circulation issues etc so I definitely recommend cleaning them at least once a month even if you have the steel inlets and outlets same with plastic guys if you've got plastic the old sort of style that comes supplied with most filters do keep them clean just to maintain these high circulation levels if possible. Circulation is really important in a planted aquarium. Plants can't move, so you have to move the water appropriately. Okay, I think we're there. Next is a bit more complicated. So we're gonna clean the filter hoses. This is the filter inlet hose, which I've already taken off the filter and the glassware. And then this is the outlet. So we have the inline heater here. This is a Hydor ETH300, and then that goes through some more hose and then into the inline CO2 diffuser. So I need to dismantle all of this and then clean them all with the hose brush. That's the glassware clean, the pipe's clean now. I've refitted the inline diffuser. The inline heater. Okay, inside the cabinet, I just wanted to run through the gear very quickly. This is the external filter, JBL Crystal Pro Fee E1501 Green Line, rated at 1400 litres per hour. That runs through an inline heater and then finally through an inline CO2 and then to the outflow. Inflow is just a straightforward hose straight into the filter. Behind that, we've got the CO2 kit, uh, five kilogram fire extinguisher, and then we've got a very high-end Greenleaf Aquarium regulator from America. Quite expensive, but awesome quality. This will last me a lifetime. Uh, goes through a solenoid, and then there's your needle valve to control the bubble rate, and there's the bubble counter. CO2 is not on right now. And over to the left, we've got the extension lead. This is the solenoid uh, power here, so it comes on a timer. I have it come on three hours before the lights come on. An hour goes off, an hour before the lights go off. This goes to the Kessel controller here, which controls the lights. So it controls the intensity and the color. And then we have the power to the lights, each like their Kessel A360 W Tuna Sun. And then this is the heater plug. So quite straightforward. Okay guys, that's the tank maintained. So I'll just run through a quick summary of what I've done and why I did it. We started off by just emptying a little bit of water out so we can get in the tank without fear of spilling any. We gave the glass a really thorough cleaning because it was absolutely disgusting using the Denelé Cleanator, which is an awesome product. And we use a credit card or credit card similar kind of type thing to get in between the gravel and the glass, being careful not to scratch the glass. Uh, we maintain the plants. We talked about why we kind of stroke the plants to lift off any waste organics, which is going to help prevent algae. We took out all, any unhealthy plants out, uh, nipped off any leaves, removed excessive growth, etc. And then we did our massive water change. Uh, we talked about why uh, big water changes are great in planted tanks because they limit and dilute these waste organics which otherwise can lead to algae. We went through the equipment quickly as well. Uh, we cleaned the glassware, I showed you how I did that. It's just uh, really important to maintain your tanks guys if you want to keep them looking really good. Um, in, heat, in bigger tanks like this you can get away with longer periods without maintaining them because they are more environmentally stable, more forgiving especially if they're understocked with fish like this one and you've got a good filtration etc uh, but do keep on top of your maintenance keep it regular if you can schedule in you know an hour or two every week make it like you know put it into your weekly timetable if possible i'll just run through a little bit of the equipment before i finish because it is important and i always get asked about these lights no matter how many times i post photos or videos and i tell people what the lights are i still get what lights are those so these are kessel a360 we tuner suns also using a kessel spectral controller and these are suspended from the Evolution Aqua Lighting Hanging Kit, which is attached to the cabinet. Tank itself is an Aquascaper 1200 from Evolution Aqua, and the cabinet is Evolution Aqua Gloss White. Um, the whole system is quite high end, I'm not going to lie, it's not cheap. If it's your hobby and you get so much enjoyment out of it like I do, 
then it's worthwhile investing you know appropriately you know you can achieve really great results as well without spending a lot of money and that's why i've done this budget aquascaping playlist which i'll, I'll leave a link up there right now i think it's there or there i can never get it right i think it's there so take a look at that if you are on a limited budget and i do have some um, exciting news coming soon about budget aquascaping as well and don't forget to uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see me scape in this two foot tank challenge as well which i talked about right at the beginning of the video so i'm going to go into the b-roll now before i do that i'm going to say cheerio um, i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already hit the notification bell take care keep on scaping cheerio